G'day guys, welcome back to Mud Rats Hunting and Outdoors. In uh, today's video, I'm going to uh, show you how to correctly fit uh, your scope to your rifle. And uh, so before we get started, we've, uh, we've got our new Remington 7615 pump action uh, in 223. And uh, we need to fit a scope that are awful. So um, these uh, rifles come um, in the police model without a uh, scope. You've just got your uh, threaded and tapped holes in the top of your uh, your action here. So uh, we need to mount a, uh, a base and a set of rings. But before we do that, we'll just show you the uh, scope we'll be fitting. The scope we'll be fitting is a uh, Leopold Gold Series VX Hog. It's a uh, one to four power scope with a 20 millimeter objective. And um, this is what it will be uh, mounting on the rifle today. So um, before we get started though, there's a couple of things you, uh, you're you gonna need to uh, to correctly mount your, um, your scope. And one of the best um, tools I've ever come across uh, on the market today is the, uh, the Wheeler Engineering Scope Mounting Kit. In this kit, it comes with um, your torque wrench, which uh, I have here, the firearms accurizing torque wrench. A lot of you guys have probably uh, heard of it. Uh, for those of you who haven't, um, I'd suggest you um, Google it and uh, and have a bit of a look. They uh, they really are a great tool. The other thing you have in the kit is you have a set of scope aligning tools as well. This will help you align your um, your optic and make sure that it's nice and square on uh, your rings are nice and square on your rail. And that's one of the most key things uh, is is to make sure that those rings are perfectly in line. And uh, we're using a um, Picatinny style rail and uh, a set of worn rings. And with these style rings, although I would normally prefer the uh, the top half style uh, style of ring, uh, these are quite good if they're set up correctly. Some guys over tighten them and, and uh, really put some pressure on the torque tube and, uh, and can really destroy your optic pretty quick if not done correctly fitting these style of rings. And, and that goes for any style of rings. But uh, so we'll show you how to probably do that today. The other thing you need is uh, some Loctite, which also comes with the kit. Uh, and the other thing you also need is a pair of levels. Uh, really, to to um, correctly mount a scope so it's exactly perfectly in line uh, and level, you really need uh, two levels. One, you need to sit on top of the um, on top of the scope, which once we get to that part, I'll show you and one that will fit in the action to make sure that the um, the action is level. The other thing that you're going to need before um, you need to um, start on this job, more than anything, is um, you want a nice stable platform in which that you're going to work from. So, um, you know, here we have the tip and gun vise, which is what I used to do all my gunsmithing with. And, um, you know, you really need something stable, a stable platform to, to start with, guys. So um, to start off with, we're going to uh, to mount the base. Now with these Picatinny style rails, guys, you uh, you want to make sure that um, they don't need any bedding. Sometimes you will get these rails and they will fit very nicely. Other times you will have to bed these rails, um, you know, because they're a little bit of um, flex in them from front to rear. This one is uh, pretty good. This one was was already fitted, and I've double checked this one. I've, I've uh, I had to take the um, the optic off because I just changed my length of pull on the on the stock. So uh, I thought perfect opportunity to uh, to make this video. So anyway, guys, the first thing you want to do is you want to set the rail on top, and you want to get your screws. And the first thing you want to do is. Um, just fit your rear screws in nice and um, in first just to make sure that um, just just not pull them down tight just uh, just loosely pull them down and just make sure that there's no play in the uh, in, in the front of the um, the mount when you do so we just want to take them down and you don't want any as you can see there, that's, that uh, that rail is fitting nicely. Now, if that rail was to be moving, flexing up and down, once fitted, it'll just nip them down a little. 
a little more to support it. If that was uh, to be moving up and down, or you could hear it, you know, you could tap it and you could hear it, um, you know, sort of flexing, then you'd you'd want to head to uh, to go ahead then and uh, embed that rail, which uh, embedding that rail uh, would uh, entail taking the right the uh, the rail off and getting some sort of bedding compound, whether it be you know whether you use JB Weld or whether you use uh, you know some sort of quick steel or something like that, and um, embedding that rail. Uh, next time I have a rail that um, that I had that issue with, I'll, I'll do a video on, on how to do that procedure. So okay, so we know the rail fits nice and snug. So the next thing we want to do is we want to um, put your rail back on again. Just remove the screws. And make sure guys, when you, um, it's not absolute total crucial, but um, it's a good idea to turn around and make sure that, you know, if you put uh, your front screws in and a set of rear screws, some um, some actions like the uh, Remington 700 action and others uh, will have slightly longer screws uh, for the base than others, uh, and you know depending on um, on the base and the the, uh, the action is, is which direction those screws will go. These are all just the one side sized um, uh, screws. So what we want to do is I tend to turn in and if if I remove them, uh, the rear two and the front two, I tend to turn and keep them separate from the other. It's just uh, one of those little uh, things that uh, that I tend to do, just as a forcible habit. So, um, but anyway, guys, the first thing you want to do now is you want to take your Loctite and you want to just drizzle a little bit of Loctite on those screws. Okay, you only need the, the slightest amount, and then you want to take the screw. And uh, same thing again, just take him down nice and uh, nice and lightly. I tend to start at the uh, the rear, and then uh, I'll take my uh, my front screw. Again, a little bit of lock tight. And I'll start the front screw. Okay. Now we can just um, go back to the rear, fit the uh, second screw in the rear. And then the last screw. Again, just a little dab of Loctite, just to make sure they um, they don't work themselves loose. A little bit too much on that one. And like I said, just just nip them down until they're just touching. Then what we want to do, guys, for most um, base screws. You want to go around about 30 inch pounds, 25 to 30 inch pounds at the most. So we're just going to set our, I'll just move the camera in a bit closer so we can see. Okay. Now, we want to take our torque wrench and we want to set it to 30 inch pounds. So uh, we'll do that. Okay, so now we're set to 30 inch pounds. We can go ahead again, starting from the rear, the rear screw, and we can tighten that down now until we get the click. Once that uh, you get the click, you can then go to the to the uh, to the front screw then again, and just tighten that down until it clicks. And you can go to the one behind it again. And then again on the last one. Okay, so now that you've got the um, the rail fitted to the um, to the rifle, we can uh, then go ahead and uh, and fit the rings. 
Uh, and what we want to do here, these these rings come with a little spacer that fit here, and we'll be um, so we'll just normally sit that in first into place. And then what we want to do, guys, is we want to fit the rings on. And you tend to want to turn around and have the uh, the screws all facing, you know, the same direction. So we'll go ahead and fit those on. Okay. So they're now fitted. The next thing we want to go ahead and do is we want to open up our um, wheeler engineering scope mounting kit. And we want to take our ring aligning tool. And our ring aligning tool will fit just inside, just like these, just like so. And then what we can do then, before we do that, actually I might just tighten those just a little. Just so they'll hold in place. We'll just have to switch over to the um, nail head wrench, those, uh, sorry, to the uh, torque style bit, those. Um, top screws for the rail were an allen head type and uh, these rings require a, uh, the, a torque style wrench so we just want to you know nip those up just a little bit just so that they um, they won't fall off when we uh, when we go to um, fit the um, ring aligning tool Just take that torque bit out. We'll wind those in by hand. Okay. Okay, so we've got those in like uh, sitting like that. Now, what we can do now is fit our aligning tool. And by having these aligning tools, guys, they uh, they will help you um, tell you whether your um, your scope rings are perfectly in line. And this uh, is one of the most crucial things that you want to check to make sure that you've got uh, absolute 100% um, you know alignment between the front and rear rear uh, rings on these, because any slight um, in uh, variation can you know twist and put extra pressure on your um, tube your scope that you don't want to do so you want to make sure that's correctly done and looking at that there they're perfectly in line now if they weren't perfectly in line because of the type of mounts that they are uh, what I would normally have to do from there is I would take my uh, lapping bar and the great part about this this um, scope mounting kit guys is these lapping bars they come in both your uh, 30 mil and your one inch size, um, you know, rings and uh, and lapping bar. So they'll cover most size um, scope rings and bases. So if we had that inconsistency there and that wasn't exactly perfectly in line, as you can see there now, what we would do is we would uh, we would take the lapping bar and uh, the lapping bar the lapping bar compound, and uh, then then we would proceed to uh, to lap the uh, the rings until they were perfectly aligned. Uh, because there's no real way of adjusting the um, the windage or the elevation uh, on these style rings, lapping them is, is crucial. Uh, you know, where some of the other style rings you can adjust for your windage left and right, and uh, you know, then it all comes down to um, how they're leveled eleva uh, elevation wise. You know, then you would lap for uh, for elevation and squareness that way. So, uh, okay, so we know that's perfectly fine. So uh, what we can go ahead and do now, guys, is remove that tool. We know they're perfectly, perfectly fine. And uh, now we can take our new optic. And with these rings, they are a bit fiddly. I will have to... Uh, Back off the uh, the top screws altogether, or well, actually, maybe even just easier on these guys to uh, remove the rear. Oops. 
open. Oh. Okay. Got the wrong uh, bit that we were getting anyway. Let's try that again. So we can just remove the rear one. So we'll take that one off. Just remember to take the um, little piece out of little block at the bottom out. We'll fit that back in there. Okay, so to fit this on, we're going to have to try and remove the top screws whatsoever. So what we can do now guys, is we can take our, um, our optic, just make sure we have this the right way up, and then we can feed the optic in, I'll just have the back of the top screws off just slightly here. Just to allow that scope to fit in and slide through without um, too much of a hassle. Top one, a bit of a pain in the neck. Okay, there we go. Now we can fit that one through, and that one will sit there reasonably well in place. Okay. Now we can take our other ring, which will pull the screws out completely. Now you'll notice in these uh, sets there's longer screws that fit in the bottom and the shorter ones that fit in the top. So um, now we want to fit one half and we want to fit the other half to the other side okay now I'll find the, uh... now what we want to do is take our torque style bit Again, and if that'll sit there, but same thing again. We want to take a little bit of um, thread lock. We just want to put a little bit of thread lock on that screw. And uh, we want to start that um, start that bottom screw. Again, take your other bottom screw. And again, a little bit of thread lock on that one also. You don't need much, just uh, just a small amount. Enough to, uh, to hold them from moving. We can go ahead and fit our top screws. A little bit on that, too much on that one. So we'll we'll use some of that on the uh, on the other one.
Okay. So now we have um, five of those. So just back that off slightly. Now, you want to have it roughly fitted so that you can at least, if you uh, if you need to, slide the uh, the optic backwards and forwards so that you can get your um, Like that. Okay. Now we want to do the same with uh, with the other ring. So what we'll do is we'll we'll back out each one individually, and uh, we will put uh, thread lock on it. Once I've done this guys, what we'll do is we'll leave it loose enough so that we can um, we can then go ahead and check our wire relief and uh, I'll explain how I um, how I do that in a moment. So I'll just um, quickly do these. Butterfingers today. Okay. Again, thread lock on the bottom one. Like I said, you don't need a hell of a lot. Just, um, just enough to um, to lock them into place, just so they can't work loose under recoil. that uh okay guys so now we've got that fitted what we want to do now is we want to be able to uh check our um yes our, our eye relief now the easiest way to check the eye relief uh on your rifle is to bring it to the shoulder as to where it's comfortable Get a nice cheek weld, close your eyes, and then when you open your eyes, you should have an exact sight picture. So, close them, and open your eyes again, and you should have a perfect sight picture. Now that's just uh, a little out for me, so I'll readjust that to, uh, to where that needs to be. Okay, so it needs to come back a little bit more, so we'll just adjust that, that back in the gun voice. And we'll just um, move that back just slightly. And then we'll take another look again. And that's perfect. Okay, guys. So now that's um, that's how you um, 
I find the best way for uh, for checking your um, your eye relief. Now, once we're at this point, the first thing we want to do is to make sure that both the uh, the rifle and the optic are exactly level and centered with the uh, with the barrel. So the first thing we want to do is we want to take our um, our levels from the kit and the first level we have here would normally fit in your action so we will open our action and there we go okay so now we've got um, now we've got our level in our action we can now 